What's up, guys? Welcome back to Let's Play Dishonored. So you did the business, did you, Corvo? I'm not one to speak against my betters, mind you, but if anybody ever deserved their fate, it was those Pendletons. What business are you talking about? Oh, I, uh, grown up business, girl. Business, I mean, Emily. Friendship. Business. Forgive me. It's okay. I heard a lot of grown up business at the Golden Cat. Oh. I should concentrate on piloting this boat. I don't think I want to know what, what kind of things she saw and heard at the Golden Cat. I really don't. But hey, it's good to have you back. We all missed you. Young Lady Emmy, I'm Callista. I'll be caring for you and schooling you while you're with us. Pleased to meet you. As am I. Tainted little child. Would you like here. to see your room in the tower? Can I see it? Yes, you may. You'll get to see it all. The entirety of the hound pits. Good. I think I'll like it here. I'll go with Callista, Corvo. I'll see you later. You do not fail to impress. Armed with a blade, you've changed the course of the city forever. And with the Pendleton twins gone, our own Lord Pendleton will assume their votes in Parliament. In one night, you've done more than most men do in a lifetime. I need to speak to you soon. But for now, Lord Pendleton requests your attention. What? Why don't you just tell me what you have to say before I go see him? Then I'll just have to come back and find you again. That kind of leads me to believe that the gameplay and the... Uh, yeah, this, the actual scene here and the dialogue that takes place in the scene were not made at the same time, but I could be wrong. Corvo, the loyalist Beautiful sunrise, don't you agree? You your work. I don't know if I can. My own brothers. We never believed that you killed the Empress. It made much more sense that the royal spy master, now the... Lord Regent was behind it, aided by some of his key allies. We spent a lot of money and exposed ourselves to great risk in getting you out of prison. But we did it because we believe that you're the one that can make the difference. Oh, and Havelock's looking for you. Hmm. It doesn't seem too bad out of shape over the fact that we, uh, we didn't kill his brothers. We, uh,. Did some other stuff. I think the faith they got was worse than death, in my opinion. Now I'm gonna go find Havelock again, wherever he All is. Right, Martin's to trigger this arbitrary meeting. scene. There's a footnote in Campbell's journal that tells us the Lord Regent's mistress sat for a portrait with Sokolov, the painter and royal physician. He'll be able to give us her name. Sokolov lives on Caldwin's Bridge about half the time, out over the river. The catch is that I'm afraid you've got to head out right away while Sokolov is at his apartment on the bridge. Samuel can get you close to the bridge, but you'll have to find Sokolov. Bring him back here intact, and it'll enable us to make our next move. I can't believe what you've done so far. Escaping from Coldridge, taking down the High Overseer, recovering Emerald. You make this old military man proud. That's it, then. All right, so now we have our next mission. Uh, we don't need to wait for it to get dark because, um, actually, I suppose that is the sunrise on a new day, isn't it? Even though we were at just sort of district during the day. Off to Caldwin's Bridge. Maybe sir. it's the sunset. We'll get our yeah, maybe it's, I think it's the sunset, and we're going to this location on the same day, so we'll have time to sleep later. We gotta hurry up and do this before the sun sets. Well, even if the sun sets, it's not really gonna. The dar darkness is not really gonna help us in this case. But this is a nice uh, atmosphere for this mission because it's still uh, in the afternoon think, like this, and the uh, lighting is just gorgeous in this level. Been in the city for years, but you lived in Dunwall Tower with the late Empress, so maybe you haven't visited the bridge before tonight. Something to look out for. See all them lights on the water. That's right. We'll be spotted for sure. Yeah, we need to do something about those spotlights on the water before we leave. Now, about bringing Sokolov back alive. He's smart. Maybe even smarter than Piero. 
Got the whole gun ball under his thumb with all that natural philosophy business. New technology, potions and the like. Seems dangerous to me. But what do I know? Alright, so now we're on Caldwin's Bridge, and our objective is to abduct the royal physician, Anton Sokolov, the famous painter. We remember him from the beginning, don't we? Yes, he's an old acquaintance of ours. I wouldn't consider him a friend, though, and he's hardly, uh, hardly a pleasant person, but he is brilliant. And he's a powerful ally to the Lord Regent, so it's critical that we capture him alive. So, uh, this is a proper mission, although it's it's uh, a little bit linear, and we're going to be skipping almost everything. This mission's going to go by really fast because we're able to skip so much. Um, just by blinking around and not doing any of the side objectives. Oh, for a combat! And, um, the like. So, and it's also, but it, because it is a proper mission, but it's also not one where you can, there's no ambiguity with this, you can't decide whether or not you want to kill him or not, but he's not a target um, that can be left at your discretion. You have to capture him alive for the story to progress. As far as I know. Alright, so I'm coming up here to grab this whale oil canister so we can traverse across this area, because there's a... Uh, there's like a mining cart up here we can use to cross this area completely undetected. Uh, and it'll lead us to the edge of this area where there'll be a loading screen. Um, but there's... Don't be misled though, if you're paying attention to your heart, um, it'll tell you that there are more runes and bone charms here in this area, but they're beyond the point that the door is, which means that they've got to be... you think they'd be past the door, but they can't be. Because all the runes and bone charms that show up on the heart are in this same part of the level that's currently generated and loaded. So they still have to be here in this area. You can't get through that door yet. So blink over to that. We see that uh, railing over there. That's where you gotta go. You gotta, gotta go around and underneath uh, this area, underneath the bridge, to get to where uh, the, uh, those runes are. But obviously we're not gonna be doing that because this is a no upgrades run. So we all we need is blink and our wits. And that's it. All right, we're already making a huge progress here. And like I said, this is another level that can... Well, oh, wait for this dialogue to go through. Even a wealthy man like you needs the city watch. Gangs are cutting throats and smashing windows left and right. Uh, interesting, interesting dialogue there with the, if you actually take the time to listen to it between that, that character and the city watch guard. Uh, I guess he's a local um, aristocrat of some kind, uh, and he owns that building we just passed. And he has a lot of fascinating things in there, including some rare items. And like I said, if you dedicate more time to this level, you can read more of the lore about it. You can also uh, get some better stuff. But like I said, this game, you, you basically make this game as long as you want to. A lot of it is not... A lot of the lore and the story of this game is not forced down your throat, it's left there for you to discover on your own. So that can mean you can finish the game really quickly, it's not a long and intrusive game, and the plot is not long and intrusive either. There's some uh, slack jaws guys over there want to get the jump on these city watch cards, but I don't think they're going to have very good luck with that. There's an arc pylon over there, which is a similar security device to the Wall of Light, but it's very unpredictable. It can zap you from a great radius, but it essentially has the same function, which is to kill rats and weepers, which we are none of, we are, we are neither of. Um, I'm going to be blinking around that, though, and I'm just going to walk straight up the support uh, structure of the bridge itself until I get to a certain point where I can't climb any higher. And then I'm going to blink a little bit uh, off. To, well, I then I realized there's that other arc pylon down there. Um, arc pylons are kind of rare, especially compared. A lot, I think walls of light are a little bit more common. Uh, but we'll be seeing a lot more arc pylons as we get later in the game. I need to do this very carefully. I must not have thought this through very well. There's usually, um, unless you go down there and disable the arc pylon. Or if you're doing a combat run, you want to fight those guys. That's always an option. Uh, but what I usually do is try to... The way I chose to go around the fence was uh, the way that I think is best. But uh, I'm going to save there. Um, 
but as you can see, that little staircase right there that leads to that scaffold and goes underneath the bridge, I think is a better option. Let me go over there. Because um, that'll allow us to... Uh, the first time I did the no-kills, no-upgrades run, this is the way that I took. And there are some guards through here, but usually they'll be, like, not even close to the area you're passing by. They're over in there somewhere, and they can just go bugger off, and we won't have anything to do with them. Uh, if you take the whale oil canister out here, you do disable the arc pylon, so that's going to make it a lot safer to climb up here. But, um... Be careful though, because if you're doing a, uh, a no kills run, you don't you do not want to use a rewire tool on any walls of light or arc pylons because it will. Here's the uh, fuse box there. This is not the uh, John Carpenter's the thing in the game, so we, there are not going to be any people. Well, there will be people puking, but there will not be fuse boxes. We're not going to be dealing with any of that bull crap today. Um, no puking fuses. Anyway. Um, <laughs> So, uh, but what we will have to deal with, like I said, is if you do rewire, uh, either of those, they will kill your enemies, which is actually very helpful in, it's almost broken in a, uh, run where you don't care about getting kills, a high chaos run. Uh, and in the high chaos run, I actually do quite a few times every time I see a wall of light or an arc pylon, we'll use the rewire tool to make it, I'm carefully blinked over that wall there to escape that guy. I see he's cl uh, climbing up the stairs. But here, it's it's too risky. You don't, For one, you don't need to waste the rewire tool because they're pointless anyway. And uh, if you're not trying to get kills. And two, you don't want to risk getting the kill when you can simply just disable it by removing the wheel of a canister. It's pointless. So anyway, um, if you see a rewire tool, just ignore it. It is like the plague itself. It is meant to be... Ah, oh, crap. I blinked too far ahead. I was going to knock that guy out, but I realized I messed it up. But I can still recover from this if I play my cards right. I can evade him. Um, crap, and I have a second guy on me. I've got this, I got this, I got this, guys. It's all good. He just disappeared. Let's find the little shit. Again, the, one of the greatest advantages of the stealth in this game is uh, climbing on stuff and climbing over enemies. Kind of like in Assassin's Creed, where. You can, it's still in broad daylight, but because you're overlooking an enemy from the roof of a building, they don't see you, and that's that's how you're able to be stealthy. Um, so now I've removed both of these wheel oil canisters, and that's going to disable the uh, spotlights on over the water, which is kind of our secondary objective. And now instead of taking the long way down, I'm all the guards are rushing to where that canister blew up, and I'm just going to walk around down... In a very distinct and uh, dignified manner, and I'm going to just mosey along here to the next area. Sorry, my commentary's got to sound incredibly strange for this part, but I've been awake since 5 a.m., and here it is after midnight um, the next day. And also, I apologize for having not recorded a video in a, in a little while, even though I have uh, the entire, all the raws for Dishonored are, are ready to go. But I haven't uh, done a commentary just because the <laughs> the Steam sale happened. That's why. No, it's not because I've been playing a bunch of Steam games. It's, it's just because uh, when I bought uh, the Deus Ex Human Revolution Director's Cut on Steam, I uh, realized I had to upgrade my version of OS X because obviously I have a Mac, um, like any sensible person would have. So I'm um, sure I just offended other people there. But that's that was entirely intentional. So. Um, I had to upgrade to Mavericks, which I didn't even know existed, because I've been living on a rock, in case you guys haven't noticed. So, uh, but upgrading to Mavericks, which took, which took all day, I finally am able to play Deus Ex 3 on the Mac, which is awesome. It runs really great. Um, but the downside was I upgraded to, obviously it upgraded to the latest version of iMovie, and I couldn't figure out how to do a commentary, so I was very uh, displeased with that until I finally figured it out. I um, also upgraded all, updated all of my projects for existing Let's Plays to current formats and the like, and it's very strange. I'm still getting used to it. But everything works just fine. The capture device still works fine as far as I know. I, had, I was having some audio problems when trying to play uh, Zoids Infinity Fusers the other day uh, for some test runs, uh, which I plan on picking up that Let's Play again soon, but... Like I said, I was having audio problems, but I was still able to play the game for a good couple hours, so that's pretty good. 
Uh, down there, you can see there's a wall of light and there's a bunch of people in behind it. Those are prisoners of some kind. There's a, that's a secondary objective to be able to free them. But obviously, I'm not going to be even acknowledging that. I'm kind of listening to these guys down here before I continue. Oh, losing frames like crazy here. I don't know what's going on. Anyway, um, using the high ground here, I can get all the way to the this big fancy armored um, metal building over here is the uh, is the one that Sokolov is actually in. It's his Sokolov's home essentially. Sokolov thinks he's uh, he thinks he's something special. So obviously he's got a very nice place and he's got a guard on top there. He's got his own guards. Okay, that guy I may want to go ahead and use a sleep dart on because he is impeding my progress by noticing me there um, worst case scenario he would have fallen off the uh, side of the building when his body collapsed and he would have died from the fall but uh, luckily that did not happen so uh, we can I'm gonna save real quick but we're easily gonna be able to get the drop on Sokolov here um, the reasons that we need Sokolov will be explained in time uh, we're gonna interrogate him when we get him back but there's a lot of different reasons why we need to capture him. The story will go into directly and indirectly, so I'm going to allow the story to go into that on its own. We can go ahead and uh, knock him out and take him without even uh, just right now, but we can actually walk up and talk to him as well if we have our weapon put away, and he'll actually have a conversation with us. How did you get past all the guards? Your tattoo is quite unusual. It is reminiscent of markings I've studied on cave walls far from the city. Who sent you? Piero? That tells me who. There's no need to be his lap hound. You and I can come to an agreement. One that I'm sure will please you more than anything Piero dreamed up. Who are you? It's quite the beard what you got there, Sokolov. Right there's a rune I mean, here. I might as well pick it up. Just to show that's there. I'll, like I said, I'll be going over the locations of all the runes and bone charms in the High Chaos run, the combat run, where we actually kill people and get upgrades. Um, so, target neutralized, Sokolov. The only way that he can be neutralized is to pick his ass up and hurl him over the side of this building, essentially. So, uh, we just, I think we just completed an entire level in one video. That's pretty nice. All we have to do is get back to Samuel, who is conveniently close. We just have to blink our way down here past these poor innocent uh, prisoners that we're going to ignore and just drop our way down to the water where Samuel's at. And we'll be done. That's pretty much it. Uh, I wish I had more to say about this level. There's a lot to this level. It's very uh, engrossing, just like the rest of the game is. But again, I think the more... Um, you can spend a lot more time in taking in this level's fine Royal details if you are doing a run you where you're not trying to do like a pseudo speed run and just ignore everything and kill no one.